Hi, I'm Katie. Welcome back to my channel. My channel here about tea. Well, mostly about tea, but today it's about tea. <laughs> so I wanted to show you a demonstration of how I gung fu brew because that's been um, some questions um, and hinting at what people are interested in looking into. I know um, here in America there are much more people familiar with Western brewing if they're even familiar with that. So here is Eastern Gong Fu Brewing, at least how I do it, and at least how I do it when we want to be fancy, because <laughs> usually I keep it fairly simple. So it starts off with the gaiwan, though you don't have to use a gaiwan, you could also use a teapot, um, but I do not have a small gong fu teapot. Actually, I do. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, typically, gong fu I typically do. So, gaiwan. So, it is a lidded cup with, typically with a saucer, um, but definitely has a lid. With this particular tea tray, I don't tend to use the saucer because it just takes up space. This is my tea tray. It has this removable wooden insert, and the bottom is a shallow basin to collect drips or wastewater. Now, to be real fancy, this is my Gangdabe or Fairness Pitcher. Um, which mainly I'm using today because it's fun to see the color of the tea, and so it's a good way to use that. And I've actually not used this pitcher yet. Uh, strainer for that. Uh, neither of these are actually necessary for gung fu brewing. The tray is not necessary. Really, all you need is a vessel to brew in and a cup. And so here's my cup. But we're getting a little more fancy here, so we are going with tea pets. And tea pets are basically um, typically made out of clay, yixing clay usually, and they are just here to be your companions, uh, typically like as a sign of luck um, and good fortune sort of thing. Uh, Mine's just because it's cute and I like it. Um, but what you do with your tea pets is you pour your rinse water over them or you share throughout your steeps and that can help lessen the uh, caffeine intake, especially if you're drinking by yourself, which I always am. I need, oops, I need a tea buddy. Okay, um, I don't know what to show you, what to show you. <laughs> So I also always have a tea towel on hand. These are super absorbent microfiber towels. And I have a scale to weigh out my tea. The tea we are going to taste today, and this is the first time trying this tea, is Churchill's Mountain View Oolong which is a blend of a couple different oolongs. And there's not a lot of information on the site as to what it's going to be, but the reviews make it sound amazing. So to start off with, when Gung Fu Brewing, my Gaiwan is 150 milliliters. So typical... Um, usually recommended for um, Kung Fu Brewing amounts is 3 to 5 grams per 100 milliliters. So mine's 150. So I have a little over 5 grams of tea and it varies on the tea um, that you're using. Oolongs do expand a lot more than others. Um, usually kind of rule of thumb is about, I think usually they say like a third, but like cover the bottom of your gaiwan. So this, oops, I'm throwing it everywhere. I'm throwing it everywhere. Oolongs could also, can also be um, deceptive. 
with how much they weigh because they are compressed. So here's what tea looks like. It is a lighter roasted oolong, so we are going to use uh, 105 degree water, but we may play around with that because there's not actually any uh, suggestion on Churchill's site for what to um, steep things up. So let's get <laughs> everything arranged here. All right, so first we're gonna start off with heating up all of our brewing vessels. Is my water, the heat's here. Give me a second. <laughs> and this is my temperature variable kettle, which is amazing because it can get you to the exact temperature. So I'm just gonna pour in about halfway in there. Let that sit for 15 seconds or so. You just kind of want to get some heat into the vessel so that when you put the tea in and water through the tea, the vessel doesn't take away part of that heat. So then we're going to just, we're going to just do this. So you're going to heat up all your things. This is also a good way to just kind of rinse, even if it's like rinsing off if they've been sitting and there's potentially like fuzz or dust or something. So just rinse out and warm up all your tea ware. So since this is a really large pitcher, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that in there for now. So now we're going to do what's called the wash and it's not necessary um, but for a lot of teas, particular oolongs and pu'ers, it is recommended because with the compressed tea this allows them to start opening up and they don't really release their flavor as well until they are more opened up. That in there. Actually, first you put it in the hot gaiwan and let it set. And this starts the opening up. Again, this is not a required step. But the biggest part about gung fu is fully experiencing your tea. So you want to take your time, you want to experience all the scents and take the time to just like parse out all of the notes for scent and for, for taste. So when you're doing this, when you're sniffing, like you can sniff the, you can sniff the leaves, but a lot of times like it's more hot. So the good way to do it is sniff the lid. And this actually has some really creamy smell to it. Like kind of smells like a milk oolong, almost. I do believe they're, t they're oolongs from Taiwan, but I'm not entirely sure. All right, so here's the rinse. Rinse is typically not over 15 seconds. I don't always use a full Gaiwan worth for them. You, like, depending on what tea you're using, if you're using, like, a compressed Dragon Ball, you want to go 30 to a minute. 30, like 30 to 60 seconds for that so you just kind of watch and look and see how things are going now see this is like really tall so <laughs> then you just pour it out I do recommend if you have not if you're if you're getting if you're new into wow my sentences are not working today if you are new at getting into gong fu brewing and you've just got your gaiwan and you're ready to start playing around with it i highly suggest um practice pouring so you get used to the m motion of it um i'm not gonna go into how to hold it because 
I'm not an expert and I don't think I do it any traditional way, um, but you wanna hold it as far up as you can so you don't burn yourself and you wanna, you don't wanna like grip it tightly. Uh, but there are a lot of um, various places or various companies <laughs> I cannot speak today. I'm very sorry. There are several people who have done um, different videos on how to hold kaiwans. I know Serene T has done one. I actually, I don't know if they have it on their YouTube site or if that was just at the tea festival that they did that. Um, but there are there are places you can get ideas for how all of that works. So. Still smells really creamy. So we're gonna feed our little tea pet the rinse water. And I named him Mulong because he's a cow. And I love Oolong. And I plan on just feeding him Oolong. Uh, the thing with Yishin clay is it absorbs the scent and eventually it starts taking on the scent. So you don't have to do this, especially for tea pets. Um, but if you designate a certain kind of tea um, and then it'll adopt that tea smell, if you do everything, it'll just kind of smell like everything. Uh, he's actually only gotten uh, dark oolongs so far, but now here's light oolong. All right, making a mess, making a mess really good at making a mess so all right I forgot to turn my water back up okay so while that heats back up <laughs> um you see my dragonfly that is heats back up here in a second okay then we'll do our steep number one and here is what these leaves look like a little bit opened on to steep number one. I know this video is taking a little long, but I, I really wanted to kind of break this down. So if you're watching through this and if you're actually interested, great. <laughs> and thank you. All right, so the thing with pouring also is you never want to pour directly on the leaf. You want to pour either around the inside rim or to a spot that does not have a leaf in it. We're going to start off with about 30 seconds. Because typically what I do for oolongs, these lighter roasted oolongs, is go about 30 seconds and look what it looks like. So lots of sitting and waiting. Sitting and waiting. So much fun. Looks like we're opening up quite well here, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it out. I'm kind of obsessive about getting like every last little drop. Um, it is something you want to try to accomplish. You don't want to leave water in your gaiwan because that'll continue to seep those leaves and make them bitter. So you want to make sure that doesn't happen. So with this sharing pitcher, the whole idea behind it is to A, observe your beautiful tea. Look at how pretty yellow that is. That's gorgeous. And you can use it for smelling. It's got a very light oxidized oolong set. Um, so it's like leafy and creamy and it smells very nice. It doesn't have anything overly floral, which is typical for light oolongs. Um, so we'll see what it tastes like. Um, the other thing for 
this is you can then pour it out into multiple cups and then everyone gets the same concentration of tea. And when you're pouring it into smaller cups, it serves to help cool the tea down faster. In theory, I haven't actually done, like I haven't used this cup. No, I haven't used this pitcher. And so yeah, new things today. <laughs> And yeah, I hate hot, hot tea because <laughs> I do tend to um, burn easily. I burn myself a lot, actually, particularly baking and cooking and things. I burn myself a lot. And uh, with tea, and I, I try to really make sure that it's cooled down enough because I don't want to burn my tongue because once you burn your tongue, you lose your ability to fully taste things properly. And that's a problem, especially if it's like first thing, and then you're like, I have no idea what this tea tastes like. Okay, so this thing is, is very tall, so it's kind of in the way. Give it another few seconds. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taste this and tell you what I think about this and then I will visit you back in a few more steepings to see how it has changed over the steepings. Now a lot of the times tea doesn't change all that drastically from steeping to steeping. Usually the first one is a little lighter and you get into the heart of the tea. Um, and but some teas do drastically change between the steepings and you can vary up things with temperature and time and play around with things as you go depending on what you're liking and what you're not liking which is the great thing about gong fu if you're brewing something and it's too strong you can always like lower the temperature or lower the steep time and make it somewhere that you are more comfortable with it so Super fun there. That has a lot of flavor, actually. <laughs> so, hmm. it's got it's got that typical light oolong flavor. I don't really know how else to describe that. <laughs> so, if you don't know what that is. It's got maybe a subtle floralness and a very subtle creaminess. It's very, it's very springtime. You're kind of picturing like grassy hills and fun things. It is called Mountain View Oolong, so picture some mountains. Maybe a bit of mineralness in this actually. A little bit of mineral. Yeah, so I'm interested to see if more creaminess comes out as we go. I will come back on steep three or four and let you know how things are going. So um, yeah, keep watching. And we're back. This is steep number four. And the color has definitely darkened. Not a lot, but it's 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 definitely darker yellow. And the leaves have opened up a whole lot. You can see how oolong does. You want to make sure oolong has plenty of room to expand. Even when you're Western brewing, make sure that your oolong's got plenty plenty of space because all of that flavor is just tr buried in the leaf and the more it opens the more flavor gets released and that's why they last for several steepings. Alright, so flavor wise what's been going on, uh, we did develop into a very floral flavor. It was like an astringent floral, which I don't like very well, so I did lower the temperature and that got better. And there's like a nuttiness, like a subtle nuttiness. It's not like a very strong, it's like a more 
I don't know, like cashew macadamia, like lighter nutty. And it's not like exactly like that, but it's kind of that creamy sort of vibe of like a lighter nut. And it, it's definitely, it's like a leafy floral, if that makes sense. So, so it's like, it's like a leafy flavor, but a floral flavor, but like a green floral. If, if, yeah. <laughs> It's like, if you have read tasting notes and heard other people talk about tea, it's like, tea gets compared to a lot of things. And sometimes you can find these tasting notes and sometimes you can't. Not all tea people, not all people taste the same things. And what you taste in the tea is not actually directly what that thing tastes like. So kind of got to find your own way to describe things. I'm still working on that. Yeah, that. So I'm boiling it at 200, I'm boiling it. <laughs> I am <laughs> steeping it at 200 degrees Fahrenheit now instead of 205. And I realized I said 105 earlier. Yeah, 205. But I don't know if it's because of the dropped temperature or because we're further along, but that floralness is pretty much gone. Sorry about that. Uh, my husband got a call in the other room and you can overhear that, so wanted to cut that off. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely as I go through this, because this is, this is the last of Steep for you, the, the floral is gone and it's just this creamy, nutty, It's really nice. Like I said, it's not overwhelmingly nutty, but that's kind of the best thing I can equate to what this is. <laughs> like there's still there's still a bit of like leafy green taste to it. And I think that's because I think this is two different oolongs blended together, so I think it's kind of that combination that's making that floral go against something creamier. So it's it's interesting. And that's what I love about oolongs is just exploring through the flavors. And so even if it's an oolong that I'm not loving, it's just fun to go through a gong fu session and try and see what happens and see what happens at lower temperatures and higher temperatures and just play around with it. That's why I love gong fu brewing and yeah, it's just really fun. So. I will uh, leave you all now. I hope that I have uh, done a decent representation of showing you how to do this, or at least how I do this. Uh, like I said, a lot of what I showed you piece-wise is not necessarily what you need is a brewing vessel. Gung Fu or Gaiwan is probably going to be a good go-to because it is appropriate to brew any kind of tea, really. Like, I wouldn't suggest brewing flavored teas this way because the point is to make a strong concentrated tea with higher leaf to water ratio and if it's flavored then that's going to throw off how that was set up to be flavored and tasting. Uh, but for your plain uh, pure teas, basically uh, yeah, brewing in a gaiwan is about the best way to go. Uh, it's good neutral flavor set up with the porcelain. So uh, yeah, so you need your gaiwan and you, you need a cup, probably. <laughs> there are people who drink directly from the gaiwan. I don't know how to do that because that sounds really hot. So yeah, I recommend a cup. I like a strainer because you do collect up some bits of stuff. And depending on what you're brewing, that can be more or less. And I don't really like bits of stuff in my tea. Um, that's really all you need is those two things and water heated. Uh, that, that, that's also a good thing you need water heated. That's like, like I said, there's ways to get around measuring weight wise. Um, it's like you don't need a vessel to weigh things out in. You can use whatever. I use my Gaiwan lid a lot of the time. 
it's recommended to have something to wipe up your spills. If you don't have a tea tray, just go work directly on an absorbent towel. And that's what I do a lot of the times if I don't want to pull out my whole tray. You don't need your tea pet. You don't need your fairness cup. You just need the basics to start out with. But it's fun and it's just this whole experience to have everything. And I love that. I love that it's this sense of just calm. And you can just kind of, it's a good way to relax for me. And so this is why I recommend it as a good way. It's a good way to really experience your tea. And I love that. So hopefully this has helped. If you have any more questions, do let me know. And either I can answer them or I can try to find out the answers for you. Or you can answer each other's questions. So... Uh, tell me what tea you've drank today, if you have, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye-bye!